Tonight, new details about the investment firm that's acquired nearly $1 billion worth of Solano County farmland with a hope of building a new city. But because of the location, congressional leaders say the proposed plans raise questions about the security of Travis Air Force Base. In the second part of this exclusive interview, the firm CEO, Jan Schramek, sat down with the ABC 7 News I team to discuss these concerns. Here's I team reporter Stephanie Sierra with the story. I'm very concerned about our national security and our food security. Spy operations. We know nothing about them. Do you wish you would have done anything differently? No. So you don't regret not coming forward with these plans earlier? No, I think this project could only have happened if it was done in a very methodical way where someone could take a very long-term view, and that included uh, raising capital in a way where the company could take a 40-year view on this. Did you see our stories? I did, yeah. You were aware of both congressmen raising alarm that there was a possible threat to national security. Mm -hmm. Did you have any thought to, to call them after you saw those stories? I felt that uh, if, they, if, they, if they wanted the answers, they should have reached out. For months, you know, the better part of a year, people were concerned that it could be tied to a foreign adversary. Do you regret not coming forward and at least calling them to say, hey, this is what's going on? I mean, we've provided information to the federal government. We provided the whole investor list to the federal government a long time ago. The entire investor list? Yes. And when you say a long time ago, when was that? At least six months ago. Six months ago? But these purchases started back in 2018. That was the first time anyone asked us. So, uh, I mean, we've, we've, always, we've always taken the view that um, if there was any concern about these investments, particularly in light of national security, uh, we would hear from um, the appropriate agencies within the government um, and we would provide information. And the moment that we heard from the federal government that there was a concern about this being China, uh, we gave them the information they needed to make sure that it wasn't. You know, the county administrator and the county assessor both told us usually when they work with investment groups or developers, they are involved in the plans. They want to sit down and meet with them to assess the viability of how it would work and what they would be up against. Do you think you should have done that? Uh, we are doing that. We have told them that we would like them to be as involved as they can be in the process. I mean, back in 2018, do you um, think you should have done that? When you started this process, do you think you should have done that back then? I think we would have put them in a very difficult position if we had done that. And so I think what you often see is that someone will come in and they will, they will acquire the properties. And then once, they, once they've acquired the properties or once they've optioned the properties, then they will come forward with the plans. And so I think the process we followed is, is very similar to what other people do. Zoning concerns around Travis Air Force Base mm -hmm. have certainly raised alarm bells for local, state, and federal officials who represent the area. Specifically, Congressman Garamendi, who told us last week he cannot rule out a threat to national security still mm -hmm. at this point in time, given the zoning overlay for Travis. What's your response to that? Um, we told Congressman Garamendi, and, and we've told it to many of the local elected officials as well, we will not change the Travis um, Reserve zoning overlay. And so this is a, this is a zone that protects about, I want to say, 7,000 acres around Travis. Um, and we've been very clear that we are not going to use the initiative to change that. And so anything that we do in the zone around Travis uh, would only be done with the support of the defense community and of the base. So what will that area be used for? It could be used for many things, and one of the, one of the things that we're working on right now is, is, is talking to the defense community about um, how can we make Travis stronger? What can we do that makes the base stronger? Um, and so any of those uses could go in that area. Um, we have offered it to, um, we have also discussed growing olive orchards there. Um, it, could be, it could be many things, but it would only be done if Travis supports it. When did you first reach out to Travis Air Force Base? Um, after we've announced, basically immediately after we've announced the plans publicly. Which was? A month ago, probably. So you, no communication before that? I mean, we've had communications with Travis. Um, uh, we've had communications with Travis going back several years where the base, um, there's tactical things that they need. They need, um, they need easements to monitor um, kind of cleanup activities. They need easements for water. Um, they need kind of practical day-to-day -day property management issues. If the intent was to build a city years ago, why did you purchase land around Travis Air Force Base early on? Um, because we wanted to be able to work with Travis in a way that, um, that protects Travis and that makes Travis stronger. You just said that you wanted to do it, specifically those purchases around the base, because you wanted to work with Travis. How can you work with Travis if you only communicated to them just a month ago for the first time? 
Because we never proposed to do anything before then. Uh, we, would, we, we knew that we would want to, we would talk to Travis before we ever proposed anything. Um, and so we would purchase the properties and then, then work with them. What do you say to your critics who say Travis Air Force Base deserved an explanation back when you first started acquiring land? Um, if Travis had contacted us and asked for an explanation, we would have absolutely worked with them um, and the broader defense community to provide it. What do you say to those people who are still concerned there may be a tie to a foreign adversary with this project? Um, I would say that we've received complete scrutiny from multiple federal agencies um, and uh, they have all of the information they need to make sure that there isn't anyone. Has that investigation concluded? Um, I can't comment on that uh, any further. But you've provided everything? We've provided everything a long time ago. And again, that was first provided six months ago, you said? Yeah. So do you plan to hear from them again? Um, I, um, I, don't, um, I don't expect to hear from them, honestly. I think they have everything they need to, um, to make sure that, they're, um, um, that there is no foreign involvement. For the I-Team, Stephanie Sierra, ABC7 News. And to get in touch with the I-Team, you can call this number on your screen or go to abc7news.com slash I-Team.